ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. It is a race against time and freezing weather conditions following the devastating earthquake that struck Syria and Turkey. More than 15,000 people have died, including at least three U.S. citizens in Turkey. Thousands are feared buried below this destruction as rescuers work desperately to find survivors. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Wale Aliou. Now, these are the images that are hard to get out of our hearts and minds. A young Syrian trapped for 45 hours, rescuers giving her sips of water in a bottle cap, keeping hope alive. Moments of celebration here in the middle of devastation. Two children here pulled out, surviving under rubble for more than 40 hours. Difficult images from more than 7,500 miles away from here, hitting hard for many San Diegans, including a man who lost many loved ones in the quake. Mike Coenker, Kimberly Hunt, just spoke with him about his heart stopping past 72 hours, Kimberly. Wale, it was just heartbreaking. His story is truly gut-wrenching. And he joined me here outside the house of Turkey in Balboa Park with several of his family members. They're all devastated tonight. Unfortunately, dozens of other family members died in the earthquake in Turkey, including his sister-in-law and his niece. And he is pleading for people all around the world to help. I call my sister and my other brother my sister and brother-in-law they go there and they don't find the the apartment building call the corrupts was and it was dark no electric and cold and rain and they find my brother and his son they was in the balcony they fell to the first floor and my sister-in-law, my niece, stay in the building. They were sleeping. And they, just last night, they pick up my niece. And today morning, they pick up my sister-in-law. Both of them is die. And I have many cousins, many friends and family. We have, in our town, over 700 buildings fell every day 30 body 40 body the the bury hospital break down no more hospital over there no electricity people rain doesn't work at night so if people did not get killed from the concrete they get frozen and they get you know i don't know what i'm gonna say but please you know if People can help wherever. A lot of people need help. I, really, I look at on Facebook, all this cousin die, this sister die, this other friend die. Every, everyone, they put different story, his family, and I don't know. This is really, situation is, look at, my sister-in-law, my, my niece, this is first, this is our family. So, like my daughter, they grew up with my hand. This is... What I'm gonna say, everyone, they feel the, be the pain in his heart only. You know, whatever you can say, you cannot... Yeah, all I can say, so please help people over there. I don't like more people to die. We have enough people die already. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. You. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Appreciate it. And Orhan and his family in our prayers tonight. Many San Diegans are asking how they can help after seeing the devastating images coming out of Turkey and Syria. Several local groups are working to gather donations to send to the area. And as ABC 10 News reporter Perla Shaheen tells us, the effort is personal for one local priest. 
I was born in Damascus. In the name of the Father and of the Son, we've visited Syria frequently. That you do not deal with us according to our sins, but according to your bountiful mercies. The situation there is, is dire. Father Anthony Bajo lives in Escondido. He's the priest at St. George's Antiochian Church. For the people in Syria and Turkey. But his prayers travel to Syria. When the earthquake hit, the big one, the major one, uh, people were sleeping. And they were sleeping in their homes safely, and it was freezing outside with rain and sleet and snow. Bajo says his family and friends there are okay, but the people are in crisis. They were already suffering after more than a decade of civil war. Many people have been displaced. Uh, many people are living in misery. But underneath the rubble is hope. Based on what I've heard from our families, when civil authorities are trying to dig through the rubble, for example, civilians will come and, you know, help. The Patriarch of Antioch has called upon every Orthodox church in the world to send aid. Other aid to the region has been disrupted by sanctions and a corrupt government. People who are donating are concerned that with the Syrian regime, their humanitarian aid isn't getting directly to the people of northwest Syria. Is the church a way to get around that? 100% of that aid that we send uh, goes directly to the victims. Bajo says the Antioch churches in northern Syria have opened their doors to create shelters for the displaced. Any donations go toward blankets, medicine, and food. St. George's Antiochian Church will be collecting donations at their service this Sunday, and we'll also have a list of links on our website to donate directly to the Antiochian Church. And Perla, we have to ask you about your family. You said they could feel it in Lebanon? Absolutely, uh, Kim. They live near Beirut, which is around 450 miles away from the epicenter in Turkey, and yet they could still feel it. So that would be, if you think of that in relation to here, that would be as if we felt an earthquake that was all the way in San Jose. So that is just shows you the magnitude of this earthquake. But obviously, thankfully, yeah. uh, no one in Lebanon was really impacted by this earthquake. Which is really a blessing because they've been through so much as well. Absolutely. After that explosion in 2020 this this earthquake just reminded me of how difficult it was for the Lebanese people to get past that and now in Syria and in Turkey they're they're dealing with the same thing we're glad they're okay thank you so much for that report Perla and we have other ways that you can help the victims of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria and 10 news.com just click on the resource center at the top of the page but that will do it for us here live from Balboa Park at the house of Turkey Wale, back to you. Dots and prayers to so many of those suffering right now in the Middle East. Kimberly, thank you so much.